Hello and welcome to Bunbury Church Online. During this short 30 minute service, may you experience something of God's great love for you and the whole world. This morning, we continue with our series on the parables of Jesus. And today we will be thinking about the parable of the wedding feast. So let's sing our opening hymn, a favorite at weddings, and also voted by you as one of your favourite school hymns, Lord of the Dance. Jesus said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And so let's say the following prayer together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a collect for today. God our Father, from the beginning you have blessed creation with abundant life. Pour out your blessings upon our hearts and homes, that we may grow in faith, hope and love, in order to serve each other with humility and kindness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now Tom Crossy is going to give today's reflection on the parable of the wedding feast. 
Well, thank you, Tim, and good morning, everyone. Welcome to Cows. We're here this week, like a lot of other people, having our overseas holiday, albeit Albert C was only the Solent and the Isle of Wight Ferry. But nonetheless, we're enjoying our summer holiday in spite of COVID. We've come to Cows not only because it's a nice place for a holiday, but also because our youngest son lives here. And we're hoping that we'll be back down here next May as he and his fiance will be getting married, COVID committing, of course. Hopefully they'll be tying the knot at All Saints Church in Gurnard, about a mile from where I am right now. And the big test will be then whether we'll be allowed to have all the guests at the reception that we're hoping for, or whether the restrictions will still prohibit us from having anything bigger than a family meal. Well, I suppose the only benefit that I can see, if that was the case, is that you'd avoid one of those usual wedding planning headaches of spending sleepless nights worrying about the seating plan. Dare we sit Uncle Jeff near the vicar, or will he say something untoward? Who on earth can we sit Auntie Ethel beside who might share her enthusiasm for gladioli? Will Cousin Roger be upset if we put him and his family right in the far corner of the room, or will they expect to be at the top table? Well, today's parable is the perfect antidote to such a problem. Jesus had been invited to a meal at the house of one of the leading Pharisees, and he noticed that there was quite a bit of jostling for position as to who sits where. And he proceeded to tell them a parable about being invited to a wedding feast. And he says the following. When you're invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honour in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may have to come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you're invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher then you'll be honoured in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And he then turned to his host and he gave him this advice. When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbours in case they might invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind, and you'll be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. And this for me has always been one of the simplest of Jesus' parables with two very clear and simple messages. The first is clearly about humility. Don't have too high an opinion of yourself as you're just setting yourself up to be knocked down. If, however, you're modest, like the wedding guest who sits at the lowest table, then you'll be lifted up, just as God will lift up the lowly and put down the mighty on the day of judgment. The second message extends from this and is simply that your actions should be guided by righteousness <coughs> and not because you expect some reward. How often do we have an expectation that our kindness will be repaid? How often when you're driving <coughs> and you politely let someone out into heavy traffic and they don't acknowledge your kindness with a wave, how often do you get annoyed? We expect our kindness to be rewarded and Jesus tells us clearly that we should have no such expectation. Our lives should be lived with humility and with kindness and with no expectation of reward for doing the right thing. Reward comes from God and comes to us through our eternal life with the Father. So if COVID permitting, we do have a wedding here next May, I can reassure the happy couple, they really don't need to worry about that seating plan. Thanks, Tom. Now for a musical interlude and Howard Goodall's arrangement of Wesley's well-known hymn, Love Divine, sung by the National Youth Choir of Scotland and performed by the BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra.
Barbara Crowley is going to lead us in our prayers. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks that we are now able to meet in your house for prayers and praise, and also for the short services that have been transmitted into our homes over the past months. We remember areas where your church is struggling to keep open with just a few people attending. Your church throughout the world has been affected by the dreadful virus and many churches, businesses and families will soon lose so much. Father, we pray that all will know you are near and you feel our pain. Spirit of the living Lord, breathe afresh on us. We pray for Tim, Alex, Mike, Claire and the ministry team. We remember in our prayers all who will be involved with children in schools and colleges. Over the past week, many people, many young people, will have received their results. These results dependent on the next chapter in their lives. Many have been very disappointed after a year of hard coursework and home studying to have such low grades. This is a time in their lives when they decide where their future lies only to have their hopes pushed aside. Spirit of the living Lord, breathe afresh on us. Many young people have set their wedding dates for the summer months, but have had to cancel this wonderful celebration with family and friends. We pray that their love holds fast and they look forward to a new and special day. Spirit of the living Lord, breathe afresh on us. My life is but a weaving between my Lord and me. I cannot choose the colours, he worketh steadily. Oftentimes he weaveth sorrow, and I, in foolish pride, forget he, he sees the upper side and I the underside. Not till the loom is silent and the shuttles cease to fly shall God unroll the, com the canvas and explain the reason why. The dark threads are as needful in the weaver's skilful hand as the threads of gold and silver in the pattern he has planned. Jesus spoke to a guest at a wedding feast about humility we in this village have seen hospitality given to so many people in need and have been humbled by the dedication of so many we thought were strangers and, and now have become friends. We also think of the people in Lebanon trying to recover from the bomb blast and we also think of the people who cross the vast stretches of water looking for peace and trouble-free lives. Can we hold out a hand of friendship in Jesus' name? Spirit of the living Lord, breathe afresh on me. In the quiet of this place and in our hearts, we lift up to you all who are in distress of body, mind or spirit. And we remember all who have passed into your presence from this virus and those whose lives have come to its end. We remember all who mourn a loved one and for those who are remembering an anniversary of a loved one. In the quietness, remember all who are on our hearts today. Spirit of the living Lord, Breathe afresh on us. Loving God, as we walk into a new week, we ask that you walk with us. Help us to remember all the help we have received when needed and how we can help someone else. 
Help us to be aware, aware that words can also hurt and to be gentle of what we say to people who are vulnerable. And in remembering all who have helped us, can we all join together in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Barbara, for those lovely prayers. Now, on this day, we've been thinking about weddings. Congratulations to Jake and Harriet, who got married here last Saturday. It was a glorious day filled with love. And they're pictured here leaving church as husband and wife in Jake's first car, an old three series Land Rover. Many, many happy returns from us all. Our love and prayers are with you as you begin your marriage journey together. But for now, let's sing our final hymn. How marvellous, how wonderful is my Saviour's love for me. I stand amazed.
And so a final blessing, the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love today and forever. Amen. So this week I leave you with the Welsh hymn, Dama Gariad. Here is love vast as the ocean. It became known as the love song of the Welsh revival, beautifully performed here in Welsh and English by tenor Hugh Prede in Cardiff. As the ocean, loving kindness as the flood, where the prince of life a ransom shed for us his precious blood, who his love will not remember, who can see. can never be forgotten throughout heaven's eternal days. On the mount of crucifixion Mountains opened deep and wide Through the floodgates of God's mercy Flowed a vast and gracious tide Grace and love like mighty rivers Poured in Justice kissed a guilty world in love. Grace and love like mighty rivers poured in sand from above, and heaven's peace and perfect justice. Is the guilty one?